you definitely know what stage of the market we're in when the comment sections get extremely heated over an intermediate top for Bitcoin. Today's video, let's look at how most investors will continue to miss the signals, not get out in time. They won't take their profits after riding up the markets for months on end. Is this the end of the market? Of course not. I don't know what it's going to take to get that through people's heads, but there can be corrections and corrections are very healthy for the market. We're talking about Bitcoin in this instance. However, we have some big stuff to get through for the traditional markets as well as they continue to grind up higher, which is leaving investors chasing their tails. This is all part of the everything bubble. It is a huge bull market that we've been calling now for years and the markets have been up from that time. So I want to make it very, very clear for you guys and help hopefully help you out into this everything bubble as it continues on. More record gains to the upside. Remember to take profits along the way by hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel. Sorry guys, that was the best I could do with the segue today. We are on our journey to 400,000 subscribers in 2024. You guys have been doing a great job hitting the like and sharing it with friends or families or whatever groups you guys are in, getting the message out because there are so many ridiculous hopium channels and the recession callers as well. We're looking at this as an everything bubble, markets heading up, but it's important to be diligent with the process. Links in the video description for TIA Premium and of course the free crypto and economic report. Let's kick it off with where we are in the cycle as always as we do with each video, just looking at the everything bubble. Now this is the 18.6 year cycle. Listen to what we're talking about here when we start with the overall cycle, the real estate and economic cycle. Then we'll get into the traditional markets, the S&P 500 and look at some of the other, uh, like the NASDAQ and the Russell 2000 for the US stock markets and then we'll get into Bitcoin as well. But it's important to understand where we sit in the overall cycle. Not much has changed from this point. All we are seeing is more reasons that this bubble is going to get even more ridiculous and bigger in real estate prices. There are so many signals that have come out for the last couple of years. While you guys know the masses had been looking for recession after recession after recession after recession, you know the deal. It's the same nonsense that they keep spewing day after day. But of course, here we are. Look at the markets. They've been up. They keep going up. That's exactly what we had been talking about. No, I haven't been right the entire way, but I look at the overall cycle and the overall uh, picture of the market and it has been screaming buy at the lows. That's all we need to do. Just buy at the lows when everyone else is screaming bloody murder and then just ride it up as high as you can. Take some profits along the way if you wish, just a little bit here and there as the markets continue to rise. Looking at it in terms of the uh, timing of the cycle, potentially still another year or two. We're looking at the traditional markets, the housing market, the economy. I'll get to Bitcoin a little bit later, but I just want to give us that overall understanding of where we sit in this cycle as the same, exactly what we've been talking about continues to play out. Markets keep going up. Now, this is going to be a massive, massive problem. They're not seeing the signals here for the everyday investor. They are chasing their tails. And we'll look at that in a moment as we get to the Russell 2000, as they chase their laggards uh, or the lagging stocks. And obviously the same thing will happen with crypto. They'll chase all the laggard cryptos like XRP. But first, let's look at the interest rates. Obviously, we had the announcements yesterday. They, they remained uh, paused. This is from January. You guys have seen this. So it's just a quick update here. Looking at how these interest rates are most likely not going to be cut as severe uh, or as often as what the masses had anticipated at the beginning of the year. January 2024, they were looking for a cut every single meeting of 2024. And we should have been down to somewhere around three uh, and three quarters by the end of the year. Now we are seeing most of the probabilities shift to the right, which is this column here, except for just overnight, we saw a couple of percent move away from five and a half down to five and a quarter. I don't know if that's going to last very long because the rest of these have all moved to the right with less chance of cuts throughout 2024. That would be most likely due to our 18.6 year real estate 
an economic cycle, the everything bubble in the last stage here of the winner's curse phase because asset prices continue up. As there's more money flowing into the system, all those laggards who had sat on the sideline with their cash, listening to Harry Dent and all the rest of those nonsense recession callers year after year after year are starting to realize that the markets are up and they are missing out on pretty significant gains. Look at the gains for just in the S&P. If you just invested in the S&P, I know no one's going to get the exact low, but in terms of a reference point, 28 freaking percent from the October low to the current price here. And if you'd seen these lows back, like we were talking about on the channel, uh, the banking crisis, ooh, so scary. When everyone was looking for a big collapse past that low, I went on record at the time saying, the S&P 500 is not going to go below 3,500 points. You can go back and review all of those. That was a very easy call, but for the masses, it was a very, very difficult call. If you can shift your mindset, you'll be able to pick those things up as well. And so from the low in October here, you can see uh, for the percentage gains to where we are now, that's wild, 50% from low to top. So even if you had a chunk in the middle, you're doing very well. Now let's look at the, um, you know, where this could continue on its journey to the upside. We've just got a, a fractal here from the previous bull market. It seems to be running along relatively well from that point. I haven't checked it out from here though. If you look at it from the October low, it looks like we're trying to play catch up to that particular fractal, which would get us right out to uh, 60, 6,100 points for the S&P 500. Um, essentially, that is the measurement of that point there projected from the low, which was dead on 50%. That's why you end up with it being almost exactly the same to the top at around 6,100 points. But just from this uh, low here in October, still tracking along pretty nicely. We've got the election coming up later this year. That would fall in line with somewhere around this point on the chart. And what we've shown as well before, just looking at the previous data, is sometimes there's a, a couple of months prior to the election, S&P 500, remember where we are, uh, of the markets just having a bit of a pause or a pullback into the election before they start to, to jump forward again out of the election. So another thing that we're seeing with this particular cycle, asset prices continuing up. This was um, uh, posted by one of our members. They're, they're understanding how to read the cycle now and they are well and truly on their way to being fantastic full-time investors, or at least being able to protect the money that they have. And if you guys want to understand more about that, how to protect your assets, how to learn to uh, invest long-term, check out the links for TIA Premium in the top of the video description. Uh, you can also read plenty of the reviews here if you jump on board with the free crypto and economic report. That email will come out and you'll get a free access to uh, the Discord to read about the reviews. Here's a particular one here. There's a, a friend that I had met somewhere. He was an absolute perma bear. He sent this to me on WhatsApp and I told him the market is not going down and you're going to get destroyed on your Bitcoin positions. He had quite a substantial position there for shorts. And like he said here in his WhatsApp message, he got out of this. You've been spot on calling the market. Luckily, he got he changed his mind and got into Bitcoin ETH and sold heavily and he's done very, very well. So. Let's move on with where we sit in these traditional markets and how they continue up. What's going on with the investors who are just missing all the damn signals the whole way up? And this is the same that um, goes into cryptocurrencies is they'll just continue to not look at the strong stuff and they'll, they'll try and run into the weaker cryptos because they are lagging. So the top or oh, the bottom 2000 stocks in the US, the Russell 2000, is now starting to play catch up here. So you can see from the all time high, it's still below the previous old all time high. Whereas when you look at the S&P 500, it's well and truly above it. So what an in um, inexperienced investor does is they will look for stuff that's down, that's still low because the markets are up because they're trying to play catch up. And you guys mentioned this to me uh, on yesterday's video, heaps and heaps of comments. I'll put a screenshot here for you guys. Valuable lessons, would love to see more videos like this on the strategy, uh, playing offensively and defensively. I talked a lot about that in yesterday's video. So it sounds like you guys are really interested to learn how the, I guess the game pl is played in the investment space. What happened, this is another, interesting lesson, what happens is they will chase those laggard cryptos or laggard stocks. And you can see it happening now with the Russell 2000, the bottom 2000 stocks. And for the S&P 500, your top 500 stocks, your top 500 companies are well and truly up. So this let them 
essentially they're just going to keep getting into these markets. And yes, this will probably keep going up. And this was a, a really interesting idea that uh, was put up this morning by Jason Shapiro. If you're not following him, go and follow him. This is not one of your old coin degenerate morons. Jason's been trading the markets for decades and makes very clear explanations of how these markets work. So if you really want to learn about markets, go and follow Shapiro. Uh, but you can see this happen over and over again. So it was a really timely reminder about how these markets work. So basically, if, if you're underexposed to the market while the market is going up, underexposed just means you haven't put enough money in, then you are going to try to find the stuff that hasn't gone up yet, which is a bit of a critical error because you want to get into strong assets. You want to get into stuff that has been moving. I know it sounds contradictory. Well, it's it's moved. How can it keep moving? It's moving because it's strong. The stuff that's not moving is not moving because it's typically weak. It will move and things will rise all together. You know, a rising tide rises, uh, a rising tide rises all boats, whatever that saying is, that's what's going on right now with the everything bubble. But when that tide goes down, the crap that was only rising because the rest of the market was going up, they're going to fall harder and most likely faster, like we see with altcoins and Bitcoin. It's the same thing that's happening over there. And so they'll go through here on their crypto um, coin market cap, scroll down, you get past 100, get past 200, you load even more, go down the list, have a look at a few more, maybe you'll um, scope out on X, Twitter, go into Reddits and Discords, trying to look for the next biggest thing that's sitting down here with some smaller market cap, and then just hope that this crap will go up. And you won't understand that most of this crap is probably not likely going to go up. And it's from very old times. I see a really old one here from prior to 2017 Steam. Not going to make it. All right. So with that in mind, another little mini lesson dropped in there because you guys have enjoyed that. Try to avoid that particular trap as an investor. Look for stuff that is strong and giving you those strong signals. The, the other stuff is the, the weaker stuff, your XRPs and stuff that just hasn't moved against its Bitcoin value and started to take out some previous highs, as I'll, I'll show you in a moment, it's probably going to move, but it's probably not going to be the movements that you want or you should be looking for considering the risk that you are putting into the market. All right, let's move on to Bitcoin now, looking at the inflows and outflows with, of the ETFs. This has been the one of the wildest rides to the downside. It's been the most amount of outflows that the ETFs have seen. You can see from the 19th here, 4,100 outflow. The, uh, the day, we got the 20th, sorry. Then the 19th was 5,000 outflows and the 18th was 2.2 thousand. So I've had a longer streak back here in January of days in a row of outflows, but this has been the most amount that has flown out of the ETFs. So I'm very, very bullish. I'm bullish on the market overall. The point that I make with this time and time again, and for whatever reason, yes, I'm reaching another massive audience thanks to you guys who are watching the videos, liking the content, subscribing, sharing it. So we're reaching a much wider audience and you've got the comments here. You can see the, the triggeredness from people when I suggest the possibility of an intermediate, a local, a short-term top for Bitcoin, which is happening and has happened now because we have one of the longest periods down that we have seen since January, that this could be a time that Bitcoin just needs to consolidate before we go on another mega run. You can see that just the thought of ETFs not living up to the expectation that this is a new cycle, a super cycle, uh, this time is different, uh, put your TA charts away because it's never going to work. It's only about the ETFs now. That is a really toxic place to be in as an investor. ETFs are there, markets are going up overall, but just be aware that when this tide is about to turn, when it's ready to turn, most won't see it because they're too invested in narratives. ETFs, yes, I've said it many times before, markets can go up, they're buying it right, but it's not the be all and end all. You don't throw away everything else and just focus on ETFs. Those who do will get destroyed at the top. I guarantee you that, especially if you've seen the previous cycles. And uh, thanks to you guys who had commented, I think it was on X as well, looking at how we saw that in previous cycles of how the markets were turning 
but most weren't seeing it because they're just so focused on a super cycle narrative, an ETF narrative, a halving narrative. How can the market go down? We're only a month out from the halving. Well, everyone knows about the halving. That's just, that's a deal when it comes to news announcements and things that everyone knows about. If everyone knows about it, then there is a chance, a very high chance, that they're already acting on that news. And so if they've already acted on it, then it doesn't have as much of an effect as you get closer to that news. That's typically a buy the rumor, sell the news event because everyone already knows about it. There will be something else. I think that these markets still have plenty of chance to go up. I just welcome any sort of correction. I hope you're, sort of, you're getting that picture and you're developing as an investor or a trader and you're maturing compared to the folks who just focus on the narratives and try to jam it down our throats with particular different types of narratives. No one said it was going to be easy in the markets, but in bull markets, it definitely seems that way, that it's just so easy. It's usually around those points where everyone is just believing the one thing. They're the times that it's quite difficult. And I've got a pretty decent post there as well. Uh, this one here that I put up yesterday. In the bear market, I was too bullish. In the bull market, I'm not bullish enough. And that goes to yesterday's video, looking at the offensive and defensive. If you can understand what type of trader you are, where you currently sit within that cycle, it's going to make life a hell of a lot easier for you. To make profits trading Bitcoin and crypto, you have two options. You can either buy low and sell high. This is just spot. We're not talking leverage where you can short the market. Or you can buy high and sell higher. So that's like a breakout point and then you sell higher. Where most people go wrong is they aren't bullish enough at the lows and they don't buy enough, which causes them to buy larger amounts the higher the price goes, and which will ultimately result in major losses because essentially they upside down pyramid. What that means is they'll buy only a little bit at the low because they're unsure. And as the price starts to rise, they'll buy more and more as the price is going up. And so if there's any sort of little correction because they've bought so much at the top, then their portfolio shows a very big loss, even though they thought, well, I bought a lot at $17,000 for Bitcoin. Why aren't I in a profit? It's because you put way too much in at the top and you weren't you didn't have a high enough conviction at the bottom. So for me, I know I'm this type of trader. I get very bullish at the bottoms and I get more fearful. I play defense as the market's going up and I start to take a bit more profits because I was in far, far earlier. But there's no right or wrong. If you are one of those traders that you want to see the market go up a long way first, speaking of which, some over on the, on the side here that don't really know what they're doing, we... You need to understand what type of person you are, right? So if that's you, then you have to play a bit more defensive of, on any of those pullbacks. So when the market does correct, well, you've got at least a stop in play and you're not just trying to add on top of uh, positions over and over and over again, just in case that the, the top is in. So you need to protect that money because if you don't protect the money, previous cycle people know the deal. You just watch it come all the way back down. You're back to where you started and you don't have anything extra to show for your time. And you would have been better off working a job as opposed to trying to trade the markets. So the next one is uh, you wait for high, whoops, you wait for higher prices uh, and buy high. And then you guess this is what they do. And then you guessed it, they'll sell low, riding the market all the way down. So neither is easy to do. Option one means you must buck the trend at the bottom. So when there's that full on fear, that's when you know you need to get in. Or option two is you need to, uh, to make a profit, you need to buck the trend at the top in the euphoria stage. And you can see pretty clearly from yesterday's video, there was a lot of people getting very butthurt about the possibility, not the confirmation, never talk about that because I don't know what's going to happen on the other side of the chart. What, I, what my job is, I'm just a trader, an investor. I just need to protect the capital that I have and make more profits from the market. And I use this um, strategy more like an offense defense. I get offensive at the bottom, defensive at the top, take that money. So option two, you make a profit, but you've got to buck the trend in that euphoria. In that euphoria, when you've got these narratives just getting blasted in your face by who knows who, YouTubers, people on Twitter, Michael Saylor, Drake posting about it, it, it gets a little more challenging to do. So if you can master which environment you are better at, essentially understanding what type of trader you are, you'll ultimately succeed as an investor or trader long-term. I'm saying long-term because it's not an easy game to do just after one cycle. Typically, it takes multiple cycles to understand 
which game you're better at. Do you like the short term? Do you like the long term? Do you like to buy lower uh, when everyone's extremely fearful at the end of longer cycles? Or do you like to buy when everyone's come back and you want to play that uh, that chase game where things can pump pretty hard and you're ready to, to get on the defense and take some of those profits. Up to you guys. That's uh, something that you have to decide for yourself. It's very individual. All right, on to Bitcoin and the price analysis. Now, I think this is a good place to start here because there was a few people saying that I've been saying that this is the top and I'd say over and over again, I'm not calling the top. I don't know who's calling for this cycle top but they're getting the wrong idea about it. And plenty of you guys understand the deal. It's I'm not calling for any sort of cycle top. We're literally just looking for the possibility that the market is going to have a bit of a cool off effect. And we can see it here from the fear and greed, just um, reset the last uh, few minutes. It's down a little bit now, 75. We've got a, a, a small drop here for the greed in the market. We've gone from 90 down to now 75 again, and it's just dropping off. You're sort of starting to feel that, that pressure come out of the market, which is a good thing. It's a very good thing. This is not the greatest thing to feel when that huge excitement is coming up. It's nicer to be in this stage to get that reset, to then pump again. I think we've still got some pretty significant prices to go. I've mentioned before for no other reason but to have a bit of fun. I'm looking at somewhere around these tops, 65, 69, and if this is the top here, roughly around 74, I would then look to extend the move from this. So about 15 to call it 75, it's about a what, 50 to $60,000 move projected from that top, somewhere around that sort of 100 to $150,000 as a bit of a round number to have a play with. I'm not basing anything else on that. And I'm not going to wait for that price either to be selling out of my Bitcoin, but just something to enjoy there in terms of the data points that we currently have. Let's see how it progresses from there. So where we are at the moment, we are now, I think it's eight days down from the top uh, to the bottom. That was six days down. We're into our seventh and eighth day now. So we're eight days. We haven't passed through that all time high yet. Um, I've also got the monthly to get onto in just a second as well. But uh, essentially eight days was the quickest one that we saw back in 2017. It's right there, November, you can see it was the signal happened and then the market broke back above within eight days and then skyrocketed to that peak in 31 days. So the good news so far, looking at probabilities only, there's no guarantees, Seems like we're not going to get an eight day bounce back to a new fresh high today. Doesn't seem likely, not impossible, but that means possibly we're not going to get a super big blow off top very soon, which I think is a good thing. I'd rather be somewhere more around this or this type of area. So we've got longer to go to get into that peak. Uh, the other thing I want to point out here is where these signals had occurred. Some of them have occurred at the top, but if you can read these here where the red arrows are, when that signal occurred, not a final top. The signal occurred here again. You had about six months. So you had 100 days and you had a 200 day move here, then 180, 180 day move here. You had another 400 and something day move here, another 180 day move here. So there's a roughly around six months, four to six months, could be shorter. We'll get into that in a moment. Essentially, all I'm saying is not a final top, not a final top when that signal came up. Signal came up here again, June 2016, around the halving. Not a final top, not a final top, not a final top. I have to keep repeating it because I think a lot of people are getting triggered that uh, I'm saying this is a final top. I'm not saying this is a final top whatsoever. There was a signal at the 2017 final top that we had with the three days down, the three red arrows. Uh, if you're wondering, this is the TIA GAN swing indicator. If you guys have this, there's a link in the video description. You go scroll right down under the inputs and then click show bar type. That is a particular type of bar that GAN used. It is not a red green type of thing. You can see the, the black dots and also the blue uh, diamonds there. They explain what the type of bars are. Uh, so essentially got one up here, cycle top, and that then showed the market was collapsing from that point. That was the bear market. It came in right at the cycle top. So you can see the, I think, the huge importance of some type of signal like this. 
And it was my brother, Michael, that has gone through and back tested this across the market. You can find Michael's details in the, uh, the video description. Go and check out his channel as well. Some great short term analysis there and some longer term stuff as well. So there it is. There's a signal, potentially the, uh, the old one to two months. We've got another signal here in 2020. That one there took about 65 days to recover to that previous price. And it wasn't at an all time high price, but it was on the way up into that next, well, that sort of mania stage of the bull market. There was the signal, market came down and then Bitcoin rose back up to take out that top 65 days later. So roughly about two months. If that were the case, let's have a look at some of these timeframes for Bitcoin from the current top right now. Should we see about a month to a breakout to a new fresh high? Well, that would take us to roughly around April, roughly around that halving point. Not uncommon, wouldn't be the worst thing ever. If we saw it to two months, that would take us roughly about May, sort of about mid to later-ish May to get to that two month period underneath the old all time high. I know this is probably gonna start triggering the, the minority, but it's important just to keep an open mind and have a look at how these things could progress. Now, I'm not saying it will happen that way. We have seen a 13 day previously in the cycle where it just pushed up for uh, a few days and then collapsed in the banking crisis and then took off again from there. The reason why it would take off uh, so violently is because there was a massive worldwide event being the banking non-crisis because obviously everything recovered from that point. But at the time it was a big crisis. Typically you would see big movements in and out of significant crises, just like the COVID collapse. But if we don't get anything like that, maybe it's a bit of a grinding bottom like we saw throughout 2023. These things just took time. It wore out people. They got disinterested, bored. They left. You can see it with trading volumes on the market now that you're just seeing uh, less people in the market at the moment. And then before they know it, market comes back, in this case, Bitcoin and breaks through those tops. And then they all come screaming back into the market. So it's really important not to go anywhere. Just keep following the charts and uh, see what signals come up from that point. Now, Bitcoin and the more macro frame here, just looking at the turning points. I've covered this before, but so just as a recap, six months up in a row happens about 14% of the time. One, two, three, four, five, we're into our sixth. They're not green months. We're looking at higher highs, higher lows only because that September was a lower low and a lower high. So we're just looking at higher highs, higher lows, which is the swing chart here, as I've mentioned before. Six months, we're into our sixth month now. So this happens 14% of the time. To get another month up, maybe we go just slightly higher like the uh, the previous one here. I'm saying maybe, I'm not saying it has to go up, but I wouldn't be like trying to get into the market to capture maybe a 5% move. You can see from March 2021 to March 20 uh, to April 2021, just those two months there, it did go higher. It was 5% past the previous old all-time high. So if you were taking a few profits, you probably wouldn't feel too bad after the fact, say in May when the market collapsed, you'd be like, Phew, glad I took some profits in, in uh, February here, maybe even in March because the market collapsed a couple of months later. But we're in this stage in the market where people can't wait two months. They think if the market goes up one day, you're an idiot, you missed out on it the day before. That was the comments that I got from yesterday's video after the market went down one day and then it spring back the other way. And now the following day, it's back down to halfway to that point. It's just, um, it's getting to that point of utter ridiculousness and people have sh very, very short term memories. So if we were to go into the seventh month, that only happens 7% of the time. So a bar that would go higher and have a higher low, 7% of the entire history. So it's not impossible. I just think it is unlikely based purely on the data that we have here. Now, we have a break into new all-time highs and we've looked at some of those timeframes to get to the end of the cycle. Another interesting point here, we've got a couple of dates in mind, somewhere between quarter four of 2024 and quarter one of 2025. I wanna see how the market progresses into those timeframes. Should it continue on because of the everything bubble here, things just continuing to screen to tops roughly late 2025, 2026, maybe we'll have a few more signals as we get close to that point for a higher price there. Stay tuned, we still have a long way to go to get to that point. All we're looking at at the moment is the likelihood of some sort of uh, pausing here, maybe even a more significant correction, 
we'll wait and see. But essentially, the data is suggesting this would probably a good uh, this would be a good place here. So onto some ETH and Solana just to cover some of the altcoins from this correction of BTCs. We're now seeing ETH BTC go up, so that's a good thing at least for the the bottoming of ETH against Bitcoin, which when this thing starts to get running again, that could be the catalyst for Ethereum to outperform BTC. Essentially, since October 23rd, now, is that dead on six months, October to March? Almost. I think we're around that sort of five month period. It hasn't gone anywhere when you look at it over the course of that period. So five months, it has basically been flat when you look at just an average line through the middle here, obviously not those extremes, but essentially five months, it's gone nowhere. It's just kept pace with um, the Bitcoin gains. I think eventually this will flip and I've pointed out several times before, this could be that double bottom, but the longer we stay down here and not put in higher highs and higher lows, then it increases the probability that we would see another test of that low and then at some point in the future, should we climb up again, that's the point where ETH would outperform. But so far, again, ETH is looking a little weak here, lower highs and lower lows. The only saving grace is a one day close above that macro 50% here. Moving on to Solana, Solana against BTC has found resistance at the previous old top of December 25, good old Christmas day. It broke through just in the last few days, broke back under, and then so far has found resistance at that top. So I'm looking at Solana against BTC, which might need a little bit more of a resting period here against the Bitcoin value. Nothing wrong with it. I think that's that could be a great place to add to your position, to get into it if you haven't already. I know there's a lot of Solana absolute adorers here, but just looking at the strength versus the weakness on the Bitcoin chart, that's typically what you'd want to see in this stage if everything is starting to come back. You'd want to see some sort of consolidation at higher prices. What you don't want to see is a breakdown of that level there, previous tops and bottoms. That's at about 183,000 Satoshis. If you see that level break down, that would mean that Solana may have had its run for this cycle to produce bigger results than BTC. Not a bad thing, especially if you've picked this up early on, you know, sort of you through June 2023 and you've run this thing up. But for now, just looking at the chart, not my opinion, just looking at the chart, it's having a bit of a rest period here underneath the previous top that it put in back in December. That's what you want to look out for for the rest of your altcoins. Look for something that is in a stronger position, hopefully uh, reconsolidating at higher levels, putting in higher lows for when this market does go. Personally, I'm not looking for crap that is still trading underneath previous resistance levels, especially this late in the game. I just don't think they've got the strength in them to move to the upside. You want to see stuff that is up because it is strong and it has a reason to be strong. Hit that like and subscribe. We'll continue to follow up with this three-day down journey and how far we go trading underneath this old all-time high. If you want access to the free TIA Discord to check out some of the reviews and the results from our members, make sure you do subscribe to the link in the top of the video description here, the free TIA report. I'll see you guys back here at the next video. Thanks again for following along. And until then, take care and peace out. We did it. We got it on.